<coughs> yeah. So <coughs> as part of the last class, right? So what we did, mm, we have written one try catch. Inside that, what we are doing first, we are trying to calculate average, correct? Right. Average. Then after that, we are trying to calculate length of the string. Right. Okay, length of the string. <clears throat> so we know a few exceptions. One is this may cause arithmetic exception. Right. Because when if you got total as a zero, then that will cause arithmetic exception. That that we know. It's okay. It's a one simple arithmetic exception. I mean, uh, we saw this one, and the second one is name equal to null. And if name equal to null, whenever you are touching that object, null dot anything. So if if name is null, if you are trying to touch that object, then you will get null pointer exception. Correct. So these right. are the two possible exceptions in this block in this block of code. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you run this one now, what will happen? Yes. Wait, it's not displaying anything. Second, okay. Now let me run it. Yes, if you run this program, so we are getting an exception. Let me analyze that exception. So this is out of stack. Cut it, paste it here. Yes. <clears throat> yes, if you see this exception, right? So we are getting null point exception, correct? Right. So null point exception, we are getting null point exception. Why? Because if you see that line number, what is saying? 17. Okay, let me display the line number right click show line number if you see the line number 17 right mm -hmm. so clearly it is telling at line number 17 correct right okay so at line number 17 we are getting a null point exception because name doesn't have any valid object it's pointing to null right so because whenever you are touching null so you will get null point exception but if you see the exception message right what we are displaying here some exception occurred it is not giving some meaningful message right right so it is not telling exactly does it creating null point exception or arithmetic exception why because we are trying to handle the exception scenario by using catch block right correct so it is not giving any specific message just it is giving some generic message right not saying null point exception all those things so just is saying some some un exception so to <clears throat> to give some meaningful message what we did i mean as part of yesterday class we have written two catch block correct right so arithmetic exception and null point exception 
see now just now I enabled that um, catch block if you see this one right so you will see some errors correct right so why because so whenever you are trying to write a specific exception messages these are the specific exception messages right right and this is the generic exception message correct right so the generic exception message will be always at the bottom side so this is the rule basically right. but i can work with the except uh automatic exception one right yes 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 but the other blocks is just for the if i wanted to see the message in a uh, whenever it's running the error and Correct. Want, a specific want, message basically if you want yeah. to see the specific message first we have to write the the specific uh, exception blocks first all right okay first specific exception blocks at the end generic exception message Okay. Does this mandatory to put the, the uh, automatic exception, generic, ex, uh, yes. generic yeah. error? Yeah. 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 I will tell you what is the use of this one. You know, say for instance, as part of your block of code, you expected two exceptions. Correct. Right. Say for instance, there is some other scenario. Let, just let me write class dot for name com dot rest. So this is one of the line. So we will see about this line more later. But just because of this line, so what is happening? You know, now I am going to run our program. Okay. So now it is giving a null point exception. Correct. Please provide valid value for name. Right. This is very clear, right? So now I will provide valid name for name variable this is also very good now let me run the program again if you see this right now what is saying is yeah. there is some exception came and what message you are getting here some exception occurred which is the the third block last one yes at line number 18 right so what is the purpose of this generic message you know generic exception block if there is some exception is coming in your drive block if there is no sortable catch block then it will go to the last one yes generic message if you have not provided any uh, generic exception catch block if you didn't provided any in a generic catch block then it will go to the last one last one yes and then I can, okay. So that you you are handling worst scenario also. This is the worst case. You are, you okay. didn't expected this exception, correct? You expected only arithmetic exception and null point exception. But there is some other exception came because of this line. Right. So even though I'm putting the alert for it, right, running the arrow and handling the alert. Mm -hmm. But in case, mm -hmm. let's say for example, or say scenario as you mentioned it. So the last has exception that will handle that particular error yes so some unknown exceptions unpredicted exceptions okay so it is always good to have that one right yes yes, yes. it's always so uh, it's good to have provide that um, in a cache block with generic exception message okay try to add as much as possible the generic messages and at the end you can add the cache block right so uh, you are going to cover 100% exception handling. Okay. Okay, this is null point exception. Yes. So this is the order: generic message to specific, <coughs> some specific message to generic. So this is very very important. Okay. Why? Because if you will keep on the top right, so this one, so compiler will not allow. Why? Because so whenever any exception will come, always it will reach that one, first one. Then what is the use of these blocks? Uh, I no see. Use. So that's what compiler will not tell. If you see the error message, right? So it will it will say unreachable catch block. It will okay. never reach. Correct? Right. Okay. Always it will reach direct catch block. Correct? Okay. So put the specific one and then follow by the last one. Yes, yes, yes. 
so this is the rule it's very important this rule basically you will see like if you see if you go for any interview they'll give questions like this they'll put in the exception block the first and they will say does this code what output you will get they will say abc length that that this so many things they'll give but it will not compile at all mm, okay. this kind of questions you will get so this is clear right right okay now we will see another example So now here, right, what I'm trying to do, I'm going to uh, get some person details. What I do, I have to pass some person ID and it will return back for me person details. So this is a service. So I'm going to develop a simple service. Let me write another class person service. person service so this is a simple class <clears throat> so here let me write public person get person details So basically this is a class person details person service is a service and inside that there is a method in okay. person id so if you give some person id right so it will return a person details okay so this is the service <clears throat> if you see is a simple person service and inside that we are going to write a simple method get person details and it will take input as a person id okay Right. So let me create another class called person. So copy this one. Let me create another person. So this is a person class. So here what I'm going to do, I'm going to write a string name string. email and integer person id so three fields okay okay to access these fields right so i'm going to do i'm going to construct a i'm going to write a simple constructor with these three fields okay so generally how we are writing the constructor constructor name should be the same name of class name correct and as part of the arguments, I want to assign these values. Right. To generate the constructor, right? Select all these fields. Just right click. You see here there is a source. Select source. And if you come a little bit down, right, you will see here. Generate constructor using these fields. Just select it. Click OK then it will generate constructor for you ah, okay. so you no need to write basically so constructor will be generated for you okay. so no constructor is generated and then after that you can assign you can create the object and as part of the when you are creating the object you have to pass these three values now come back to this class now we have a service get person details you will get person id and you have to create here person object correct all right person, person. p equal to new person new person the first field is as part of the way because this person is having a constructor which is having three fields correct right so I have to pass all the values, right? First one is name. 
so let me pass here abc abc at the rate of email.com so this is the second field and person id is the, the last field now person object is ready now what i have to do i have to return p now person service is ready correct right so now what i want to do i want to call this method so how can i call i have to create an object for this one right mm -hmm. so let me create an object for this class here person service equal to new person service correct person service dot get person details now here i need to pass the person id correct so i'm right. going to finally i can I, I can able to call the service right right so here so it will return a person object correct mm -hmm. person p equal to new person so now i want to print it system dot person details Person details p. So I have written a service inside that there is a method called get person details. If you pass some person ID, it will return you a person object. Correct? Right. So far it's clear. Right. Okay. Now let me run it, and you will see the person details. So it's giving some person details. Correct? So we can able to see it. So com com dot test dot person at the rate of. So why because we have not overridden the hash code. Hash code equals method and all we will see as part of maybe tomorrow's class, not tomorrow, whenever. Okay. So that's what we are not seeing the values. Let me overwrite. So here, so here just right click here. Source. We see here, right? There is a <clears throat> there is a method get generate to string. Right click on the source and go to the generate to string. Just select it, select all the fields. So this method also we will see later. This hash code and equals method I will explain you as part of next class. For time being, just you can ignore this one. Okay. So what is the purpose of this one, you know? So right now, I ran the program, what you are seeing here? Person details, what you are seeing here? Package name, dot class name, at the rate of some memory location, correct? Right. But I don't want to see the, this is, these are not person details, right? Right. So I want to see name, email, person ID, like that, correct? Right. So to, to see the details, what you have to, we have to, override the two string method so these two string method will come as part of object class so i told you right some two three days before every class is subclass of object class mm -hmm. so anyway object class i am going to cover as part of next class so that time you will see more about this two string method okay okay now go back to this throw demo if now i am going to run this program Again, one more time. Now, if you see what you are getting the person details, you are getting ABC, ABC email, person ID, correct? You are getting all the details, correct, right? Right. Say, for instance, there is some exception occurred in your service. Let me introduce some exception. I wantedly, I want to introduce some exception. So integer x equal to 100 by 0. So this line will create what kind of exception? This uh, automatic one. It, it will create arithmetic exception, correct? Right. To handle this one, what we are trying to do, we, what, we, what we used to do, we used to do try catch, correct? Right try and after that we are writing here catch and within a bracket exception yes it's in the bracket exception or 
arithmetic error so this is what we are doing correct right so let me write here so this piece of code also i am suspecting it might throw some exception so i am going to keep inside the So now, if you see here, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> see, there is an error message. So now P is a local variable, right? Right. So, so for local variable, always we have to assign some value, correct? As part of last class, we have discussed. Okay, yeah. So <coughs> P is a local variable. So we have to assign some value. So just now I moved this code to inside drive block and I'm creating some exception. Okay. Okay, let me put this line as the first line. Yeah, just a quick question. Yeah. Um, so within a trackers, I thought that it's just a one specific uh, line. It just, if is there any error, if you suspect there is a error in that line. So in that case, you use the you put that code in a try cache. So correct, 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 correct. So, so you here, can you put, yeah, you can put multiple lines, right? Multiple exceptions, you mean? No, multiple lines within, within a try block, right? You can, like you can write any, any number of lines. There is no limit. Oh, there is no limit. You can write n number of lines. There is no limit. Oh, okay. You can All write right. any number of lines. There is no limit. Okay. In the same similar way inside the cache block you can write n number of lines there is no limit a number of uh, okay inside yeah. cache block also you can write n number of lines Got it. now in this code this is my code basically so first line it it, it might create some exception correct hmm. okay yes. now let me run it If you see here, right, here basically exception occurred, correct? Right, because now value is just... Yes, so let me print this value. So I'm going to print that value also. Now let me run this program again back one more time. See here now you are getting a message, person details null, correct? Yeah, before that is, okay. And are you getting any notification why that uh, service person details is null? The uh, line number nine and uh, ten, uh, ten and nine. Yes, line number ten. It is saying, but this message we are getting from some different class, basically person service. Right. <coughs> so basically, he from here, he just is displaying the message, correct? So if yeah. you comment out this one say for instance you commented this message you are not displaying any exception message but still it is going to exception block but we are we, do, we are not displaying any exception message correct okay, now let me run it now you are getting any notification no nope, it doesn't say the whether exactly or error yes, yes yes does user getting any notification no nope. it's not at all giving any exception message to the user right so in this case, user don't know what happened. Why the service failed, user don't know. This is the user, right? User of your service, correct? Right. So this is the user of your service and this is your service. Mm -hmm. So when, when, when your service is failed, we need to notify the user, right? My service is failed because of this reason. Then the user is happy, correct? If you are not saying anything, just say, uh, you just if you are returning null, right? So user don't know what happened exactly. So meaning this is your client. And this is your server, correct? Mm. So when our user is calling service, so service need to provide value, correct? All right. Say for instance, service is responding, it is giving null. It is not saying anything. Then client don't know anything, right? Why this service is returning back as a null. So we need to tell like a service is failed or no data available, some meaningful thing, right? 
All right. So we are not giving proper message to the client in case of failure scenario. Correct. Just we are giving null. So instead of that one, what I want to do, I want to throw the exception back. Whatever the exception I'm getting, I want to throw to the user. Right. Okay, now write it here. So whenever you are throwing a message here, right? So we have to write here throws. So now when our exception occurred, what you are trying to do, you are throwing the exception message explicitly, correct? Okay. Okay. So instead of writing on that particular code on down here, mm -hmm. just I'm throwing the exception message, whatever I'm getting, I'm throwing to the uh, caller or user. Okay. So user let, let user decide whatever he want, but I'm notifying to the user. Okay. User take the decision what he want to display, but I'm, I want to throw the message, whatever I'm getting this time throwing to the user. If something exception occurred, first let me run this one and we will see more whether we are get user will receive some message or not. Now see here what user is getting. Yes. So user is getting some failure message, right? Right. So let me write a positive scenario. Okay, let so me just give me a second. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Copy person, get person details and the integer person ID. And then you from the class, from the class level, you are throwing that exception. Okay. Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm getting the, I'm, I'm catching the exception. Just after that, what I'm doing immediately, I'm throwing the exception back. Just I'm throwing it. So if I put it E dot print is take there, it's not going to throw back, right? It will print it just, it will print the details. It will print, but it's not going to throw back to the user. Yes. It will not throw back. If you comment out this line, it will not throw back to the user. So throw a, so that means it's okay. I want to notify the user. So that's what wantedly I'm trying to write throw. Okay. Whenever you are writing, whenever you are doing throw, then you have to write throws and what kind of exception it might possible. So one is arithmetic exception, correct? Right. If there is any another exception like uh, nile pointer exception. Hmm. So here say for instance, so here also null pointer exception. Then if you want to throw this one, so you have to write here comma null pointer exception. So whatever exception it is raising, just blindly we are throwing to the user. So user now user will get that message. So how user knows what kind of exception it is throwing? Let's suppose I am the consumer of this service. So far, it's clear. Throw, right. throws. Right. <clears throat> throw, throws means. <clears throat> so whenever you are writing a service, if you want to throw the message to the user, so that user is came to know, user will came to know what kind of exception messages are occurring in our services. Correct. Right. So if you see here, right, person service dot get. Just just keep cursor here then it will display some <clears throat> kind of help. See here throws arithmetic exception comma null pointer exception. So it will give some kind of hint. Okay. So this method might throw these kind of exceptions, arithmetic exception or null pointer exception. Okay. So user is getting some indication right now. <clears throat> so that is the use of throw and throws. Right. So whenever you are throwing any exception, then you have to write here throws and corresponding message comma separated by exception message like this. You yeah, can able to write. You can, you can put it n number. Of yes, yes. You can put n number of exceptions. There is no limit. Okay. By but you have to put the throws before. Yes, that. yes, yes, yes. Okay. Now say for instance one positive scenario we will see now thousand by ten. It will not give any exception, right? Right. 
100 by 10 it will not give any exception let me run it let me run it so now you are getting the details correct mm -hmm. so if let me write one failure scenario so now i'm going to give here as a zero 100 by zero now let me run it so it will fail now and user will get notification see user is getting a message see hmm. it is saying arithmetic exception now user is receiving this message hmm. now user can decide whatever he want to do if you want to catch that one what you have to do again here we have to write the try catch block for this one correct we have got this particular line line number 99 it is throwing an exception correct right so again here what you have to do you have to write try catch block okay can you write yeah i will write that one so here how you know <coughs> it will throw an exception so whenever you are seeing here see here it is saying arithmetic exception or null pointer exception correct right so now uh, what i'm going to do i'm going to write here try catch <coughs> So, so you can write here what are the possible exceptions arithmetic no. exception null point exception correct it is clearly it is saying correct mm -hmm. so now let me write here arithmetic exception so here you can write service failed due to arithmetic exception correct right if service fail <clears throat> then you will see this message mm -hmm. so now let me declare this variable as a global variable okay just a quick question can you put that after the service uh, due to uh, service fail due to the architect exception can you uh, after the end can you put the confirmation and then plus e oh you want to see the message yeah that also it's useful for the user e dot get message okay so now user is very clear why the service if service is failed you will see this message okay okay if now let me run it It's very clear, right? For user now, see service is failed due to by arithmetic zero. exception and divided by zero and person details because of that person details are null. Okay. Okay. Now just make it up the service. Some positive scenario. Now let me run this program again back one more time. So now we are getting person details. Correct. All right. There is no exception occurred. There is no exception occurred. So this is what if you see in the ATM, right? ATM or net banking, when you are transferring funds from one bank to another bank. Right. If for instance, you are transferring funds from B bank B1 to B2. So B2 is down. Mm -hmm. so for instance, B, you are not able to connect to B2 bank. Service is down something. So at B1 side, right? You have to display some proper message, right? So they they are communicating like b1 and b2 correct so you are here you are you are at bank one so you are trying to transfer from funds from bank one to bank two. bank two correct so bank two is not responding it is giving some failure message so the same failure message they will send back to bank one and at the bank one side they will display some proper message to you so you have to look for this message okay correct yep so if you are not able to transfer the funds you have to tell the message why you are not able to transfer the funds because bank to service is not available or there is no funds in your account some message we need to display right right say for instance in your bank account bank one amount is not there there is no sufficient funds then also we have to display correct or if if you are not able to connect to the bank two 
then also we have display that message that exception message or some meaningful message whatever you want to convey to the user right if bank 2 is not giving proper message then at <clears throat> bank 1 they are not able to display some proper message right right so that is based on bank 2 how they are giving the message the same message they can uh, convey to the users mm -hmm. the, okay. this this is clear right <clears throat> throw and throws yeah so this is very important when you are writing any code always you have to throw the exception back okay uh, can you go can you just give me a little brief summary again just from the beginning yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so whenever you are writing any service any method right so then, inside that method if you are writing any try catch block right if you are writing any method inside the method if you are writing any try catch block always you have to throw the exception back to the user always okay. just remember blind rule never never suppress the message never suppress the message always throw the exception to the user okay so always you have to throw the <coughs> exception to the user so that user will be aware what is happening okay now come back to the throw so for every catch block whenever you are getting any exception so you have to write throw so what is the use of throw means any if if this exception occurred or if this catch block got executed this particular line will be executed correct throw e all right so mm -hmm. so because of this throw e what is happening you know so this line will be executed so if you are trying to throw null point exception so you have to mark here throws right. null point exception okay so now it is clear throw and throws right uh -huh. okay so whenever user is trying to call any method so now i am going to call person service one of the method get service right. so it will clearly it will give some indication See, it is throwing, it is throwing arithmetic exception or null point exception. It might throw, correct? Okay. If user will see these kind of indications, he need to provide try catch. He need to protect his code, right? Right. So user need to provide his code. So he need to write this try catch block. User need to write client or user or oh, end user. Yeah. So I'm using two ways to catch up the error. Yes. One is both of them is a runtime. Yeah, it's a runtime. Basically, exception may occur or may not occur. If if exception occurred, we need to say we will be in a safer side. Okay. So that's what I'm writing here: try block and cache block. Okay. You might avoid to writing that block, but you are writing it because if there is any error, just to catch up. Yes, just yes. I want to catch up and I want to show some meaningful message to the my user. Okay. All so right. At bank side, you will never see this kind of exception message, right? These red lines displaying some five, six lines, correct? Right. So they will display some timeout exception occurred. Please try after some time, some meaningful message they will display, right? Right. <clears throat> so they will never display exception message as it is, correct? 